Hi, Minnie is here taking a closer look at the announced trailer for Mass Effect Andromeda shown at E3 last month. If you haven't seen it or want a refresher, I've included a link in the description box below. The first thing to keep in mind when you watch this trailer is that there is no actual gameplay footage. And though it's probably too early for gameplay footage anyway, it's tough to get a ton of super specific information without actually seeing the game in action. However, there are a few things to pick up on. The most important and obvious of which is that the new Mass Effect will take place in a different galaxy. Now that information wasn't exactly new thanks to the Reddit leak, but the switch from the Milky Way galaxy to the Andromeda galaxy changes a lot. This means that the new game will feature all new settings, a galactic power structure featuring brand new races and new enemies, brand new technology, and perhaps most importantly, there will be little impact from the story of the original trilogy. Now, according to that Reddit leak, you'll be leading a group attempting to start a colony, which is a lot different than striking out to defeat an enemy. This ridiculously long colonization attempt makes a sort of sense. Towards the end of Mass Effect 3, the Reapers are everywhere. The Milky Way galaxy is almost completely trashed, and it ends up that way no matter what ending you go with. Galactic infrastructure is ruined, billions and billions are dead, and the memory of recent destruction might make migration to a new galaxy appealing for many. Potentially the most interesting thing about this new setting and plot is that to locals, you'll appear to be an invader. Even if you only settle unexplored worlds or untouched systems, they're unlikely to be happy about it. Think of it this way. If alien refugees showed up to set up a colony on Mars, we'd be pretty freaked out. Even if those aliens had no intention of making a move on Earth, even if the aliens were chased from their homes and had nowhere else to go, and even though we can't even manage to send our own people to Mars, we would view that colony as a severe encroachment. And while settling on a planet in the same system is more threatening than settling in the same galaxy, the established races of Andromeda are extremely unlikely to have warm and fuzzy feelings towards your attempt to colonize near their home. They might even consider you to be the bad guy. And you would be from their point of view. There are a few tiny clues to the storyline and potential time frame of Mass Effect Andromeda. Here, you can see the N7 emblem on the character's armor. Since the N7 program is, or at least started out as, a strictly human operation, this suggests that whatever you're doing in the Andromeda Galaxy was sanctioned by the Human Alliance or the surviving galactic community. Based off the dude's equipment in the trailer, I'd say that Mass Effect Andromeda takes place very close chronologically to the end of the original trilogy. This armor set is remarkably similar in design to what can be found in Mass Effects 2 and 3. Here's a shot of the guy holding what appears to be an M6 Carnifex, or something that looks extremely like one. If there was a larger gap of time between Mass Effect 3 and Andromeda, I would expect more advanced looking equipment. But guessing how long has passed from visual differences in technology is near impossible especially because technological progression in the Mass Effect universe is determined by somebody else's imagination. This trailer also features our first look at the new Mako in action. The return of the Mako is one of the first things the developers mentioned when we learned that this game was coming, and I'm still not all that sure I'm excited about it. The concept of exploring new planets in a vehicle sounds great, but has been far less exciting in practice. There will have to be some dramatic upgrades to the way the Mako handles. And there is evidence of that. The Mako now has powerful looking rocket boosters that promise to add a little excitement to what was an incredibly slow moving vehicle. However, even if the Mako handles like a dream, how interesting its inclusion is depends largely upon what kind of environments there are to explore and what can be done in them. Driving around and picking up galactic trash and searching for the occasional view probably won't cut it. The one other major change to the new Mako is the lack of a turret. The offensive firepower of previous Mass Effect ground vehicles has been one of their more interesting aspects, but the lack of a gun on the new Mako makes it seem like vehicular combat will not be a part of Mass Effect Andromeda, unless you consider running things over to be vehicular combat. There might be some crazy missiles or lasers hidden away somewhere, but this first look makes the Mako appear to simply be a transportation vehicle. It's far too early to rust a judgment on the Mako, even if its past hasn't been stellar. I probably would have preferred some kind of aerial vehicle instead of the Mako, but I'm sure that's a lot harder to program for. I'll hold out hope for something like that in the future. The most interesting new detail from this trailer is the personal jetpack. 
Although jetpacks have become kind of a staple in sci-fi shooters, having some kind of rapid aerial movement is new to Mass Effect, and it could dramatically change the combat. Jump packs allow you to get in and out of combat quicker, and having one would allow you to traverse territory faster, attack from multiple angles, and take more risks in exposed areas. It's possible that this new ability isn't much more than what we've seen in the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer DLC. The aerial Omniblade strike, shown here, is remarkably similar to the heavy melee of the Turian Havoc soldier. It does appear that this particular jetpack is more powerful than simple quick jumps as this guy is able to jump all the way uphill, but we'll have to wait for actual gameplay to see for sure. The final thing of note is that Mass Effect Andromeda is scheduled to be released during the holiday season of 2016, but don't be surprised if that gets pushed to the first half of 2017, as that seems to be the trend for recent AAA releases. Thanks for taking a look at the announced trailer with me. Keep an eye out for more videos from me detailing or speculating on what we know about Mass Effect Andromeda, but for now, I should go. I should go. <sighs> I already said that. Ha ha ha!